Ooh, what a hot mess this thing is. This is by far my favorite failure of all time. I mean, you know, success stories quote that timing is the most important thing, and this is just a perfect example of how to get it all wrong. But hey, it was their first go, man. Be kind, hey? While yes, this was the first time that Microsoft put their name on something. There you go. But Microsoft have been in the game since the very beginning of the Media Player Wars. Microsoft are doing it the way they knew how to do it best, which is to basically license software and just make a turnkey operation where they sit back and make lots of money. In the early thousands, there was heaps of music pirating going on, so record publishers really wanted a way to have DRM. Microsoft supplied that. You know, in 2003, Microsoft introduced their portable media center, directly competing with the iPod right up there in the high end. In 2004, they introduced the Plays for Sure seal of quality. If you saw this logo, you knew that your device was of high quality and would sync with Windows no problems and they would never put it on any old random plastic garbage that people didn't want. Mmm, can you believe no one bought this? This is brand new. <laughs> Look at that. It'll handle DRM download and subscription stuff. So really, Microsoft had the most experience. They were making their own OSs and they were basically working with the entire competition. And that's the thing, Microsoft wasn't the only competitor at the time of the iPod. You know, this classic guy. And if you ask me, Apple's real competitor during these days Creative. I mean, look at this business right here. Creative were there from the very beginning. They had the second ever jukebox. Six gigs, mate. <laughs> you know, and also Toshiba, the people who basically invented the tiny little hard drives that made the iPod possible. And check this thing out. It's, I mean, this thing's thrashed. It doesn't work, unfortunately. It's beautiful. Look at this curved business up here. I love like the chrome highlights. It's metal back. I mean, you can tell by the dents. Big old D-pad, but it is stylish. And look at that. Windows logo, right? Microsoft was all through this business. I mean, check this little guy out. Competing with the Mini? The M-Robe. How cool is this? There was a lot of really cool competition. I had one of these first. I didn't have a Mini first. But the year is 2006. And we are delighted by the Zune. Literally a whole year after the 5th gen iPod came out, mind you. Yep. Brown. I had to get it in brown. Welcome to the social. Yep, the social indeed. Oh, oh we'll get there in a minute. Oh, we'll get there in a minute. You know, this thing costs the same as an iPod as well. And like the, the cable's actually really nice. I wonder where they got their inspiration for the connector style. Oh, the startup disc. Also, <laughs> this in brown. Starter. Yeah, get used to that. I mean, this is a nice little guide. I mean, this is actually really nicely laid out. I like it. Ooh. Oh. That is a... That's a quality egg bag. I don't mind that. Ooh. Product guide, nice and curly. Oh, it's just jargon. Yep, this is a Microsoft product. Look at this. It's just words and words and words and words. Whoa! There it is, on this annoyingly short pull tab which makes it really hard to get out and tears the box over time. There you go. Now, I was actually super excited to get this. I never had one of these. These had no traction here in Australia. They were literally zero for sale at the time of making this video. None at all. None of my friends even knew what this was, but I knew what it was. And as a fully grown adult to come in and actually have a try at one of these and see what it's like. And I absolutely hate this thing. Not because it's poorly made. It's actually really nice. Yeah, it's made of plastic all round. But you know, I subscribe to AVE and he's taught me that that not all plastics are equal. And even reviewers said it's really nice. It's got this texture to it that I really dig. It's not because it sounds bad, because it doesn't. It sounds good. Even the UI has aged amazingly. I mean, let's fire this puppy up. Oh yeah. Look at that glare. Yeah. This UI is super modern. Like it looks good. I don't even hate the color. I mean, dog poo brown and mushy peas green. <laughs> like if you're gonna arrive this late to the party and go up against the king, you might as well be a bit nuts. And so I'm all in on the brown and apparently it was the most popular color. But the black looked pretty good, but the white looked really nice, really nice looking thing. I hate this thing because it's the laziest, most arrogant bum swipe of a product to be released by a gigantic and above all massively wealthy company. 
It turns out Microsoft rushed the Zune. It's basically a modern AAA game. So I did go in open mind. There's no Apple versus Microsoft versus anything going on. But the more research that I did, the more that I absolutely hated this thing. I mean, why all the hype in the first place? This is by far the most requested thing by people. It was the first true competitor to the iPod. Well, mate, you just told us about these guys who do the like the exact same job, hey? These are all competitors to the iPod, right? Well, yeah, they make handheld devices, but you were buying into an ecosystem. iTunes accounted for 80% of all legal digital downloads. The success of the iPod was basically revolutionizing two industries at once. These guys depended on someone else for their software and it was usually a bit buggy and a bit weird. Whereas Microsoft launched the Zune Marketplace along with this guy. And while I say that Creative was the true competitor to the iPod, this was classic Battlegrounds, mate. Old Papa Steve versus Great Unky Bomber. Gentlemen, Steve Bomber! People wanted an iPod, a really nicely made thing, but without all the Appleness that went with it, with all the DRM and kind of locking in. So the biggest selling point was the massive screen. And the new Zoom store didn't even have movies or videos in it. None of that. So, so like you couldn't even make use of it right out the gates. You know that DRM that we're pushing from years ago and they've been supporting since basically MP3 players were actually getting their traction? So you'd imagine that this would be fully compatible with everything that Microsoft's been doing up to that point. Uh, no. They've just wiped the slate clean and just started a new DRM basically, just for the Zune. Hmm. Worse than that, the store, right? So if you want to get a song on iTunes, 99 cents and you got it. For these guys, you got to buy like Microsoft points. Like, you gotta get five bucks of it at a time. So if you want one song, you have to drop five coins in. And it was 79 points a song, which is like, it's meant to seem cheaper, but it works out to being the cost of 99 cents. It's just so shady. They basically turned buying music into buying animated decals for Rocket League. People were saying that album artwork from purchase stuff on the Zune store just didn't look good. It was like really low res on the display. Oh, and by the way, this guy can't do WAVs or lossless files. None of that business supports MP3, WM, WMA, WMV, and JPEG, basically known as Trash Trash and Garbage. The first ever iPod could support WAVs. You know how you can use iPods as an external drive? Not the Zune. My iPod Shuffle could do that! I use this for homework! And they basically turned their backs on all the companies that took on their software over the years. You know, imagine if the Zune was fully compatible, it would give these guys a little more purchase because the stuff you buy on this might be able to be compatible on this because look, there's the Windows logo right there, but no. So long losers, sorry you got stuck with their lame software, hey, you know, so uh, see you around, you know. Oh, well, hang on mate, can I borrow you for a minute? Hate reason number two. This is just a reskinned Toshiba Gigabeat. Like when the patents were first coming out for this, it was labeled as a Toshiba. Tech analysts knew. Toshiba even built these. All Microsoft did was redesign it and they made it look like this in poo brown and mushy peas green. Turns out it was basically to rush it out the door in time for Christmas. Ugh. How sick of that are we, eh? The fun thing is, so yeah, while the screen is bigger than this guy, it's the same resolution. So people complaining that, yeah, it's bigger, but it's blurrier. And so it's got a bigger screen, it's also got a bigger everything. This, it's pretty big. Check that out. So this is a 30 gig model. This is the big Chungo 80 gig model. Let me compare it to an actual 30 gig one. I mean, you get a vibe on just how much bigger the Zune is. Let's look at controls here. I mean, over the competition's lifetime, Let's have a look at this guy. What I actually think is a really good competitor to the iPod video. Don't get me started on its chung factor. It is a big chunkster. It's got the touch at the bottom. You just touch to go into things. And this is like left and right as well. It's got a context button. These buttons are way too mushy for how light and nice this middle one is. I really do think this is a genuine competitor to the iPod. Yeah and the awesome M-Robe, and it's all just touch. I mean, it's just plastic, but it's it's super cool how it looks. Oh, so beauty. All right, let's have a look at the Zune then. Blow me away, ominous Zune circle. Well, here's the worst bit. Clear out, weirdos. It's just a D-pad. Yep. You just doink, 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 doink. That's it, it's just a D-pad. Because of course it is, it's a knockoff of this. <laughs> you know, friends that I give this to go like this. 
because I think it's going to do something like that. Even reviewers at the time thought that how could you be so empty minded to do something like that in an age where the iPods reigned as king forever? This is a second gen one, the thickest iPod they ever made. It has a touch thing. I mean, this actually looks stylish with the D pad and the center button. Like, you know what you're getting in for. And then you would see it in a store and go, cool, I don't want that because it's got a lousy D pad for navigation on it. Instead, with this, you're like, ooh, what could it be? It's a D pad. So what was Microsoft's handling of people just going like, so you've just taken a gigabit, you know, it's a thing. Well, they said, well, yeah, we'll make, we'll make a better one next time. We're going to like do all the work ourselves. And you're going to be like, whoa, I love Microsoft. We'll get to that in a minute. The Zune still has one more trick up its sleeve. What does that look like above the battery? Uh-huh. It's got Wi-Fi. Suck that iPod, mate. You can't touch this. Uh, uh, collectibles. Uh, so you could browse the internet on it. No. No, you can't. <laughs> All it was used for was being able to send one song to another Zune, which honestly sounds awesome. That is a great idea to be able to go flick, 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 and you know, send songs to your mate. What really happened was it was like sharing biscuits with the only endangered species of animals. They just, just got all these biscuits and no one to have them with. And there was a three day limit on the content. You needed a Zune account to be able to do it. Microsoft wanted to know who was doing what. And so even if you made your own music and flicked it to someone, they would only have three days to look at it or look at it three times, honestly, and that was it. I mean, Folks were more excited about the possibilities of the Wi-Fi, but really it didn't have much of a chance because in classic uh, mid-2000s Microsoft marketing, they called this feature of sending tracks wirelessly squirting. I mean, it's like coming out with a new chocolate bar and calling it the poo. It doesn't matter how good it is. Feeling peckish? Have a poo. Doesn't work. And no surprise, nothing ever came of the Wi-Fi capabilities. The biggest screen and Wi-Fi were the biggest perks and it was big and blurry and the Wi-Fi was basically useless. There were stories of people going to the demo booth as the Zune was launching and they wanted to try that feature out and they didn't have it set up to try. And you know, again, the stress how late to the party they were, the fact that the fifth gen video, they, these weren't launching side by side this was a year old and this was like the iPhone 6. It was the iPod everyone was waiting for. Just to show how successful this thing was, right? In 2006, when this was basically the iPod to buy, Apple had sold up to its history about 40 million iPods. It sold that number again just in 2006. The year this launched was the iPod's best year. <laughs> but there was something that these guys were actually too early for. Music streaming. Yep, it was a full-blown music streaming service. 15 bucks a month, every month you got to keep 10 songs. And you know, that is totally where we're at now. And it totally worked. You plug this in and you sync music on and off you go. And music that you squirt to other people, you know, once the time was up, they could find it in the Zune store, marketplace, whatever, and then they could choose to buy it or something. Hey, nice work. Unfortunately, in 2006, people were against subscription models. People wanted to own stuff. It's Streaming wasn't that big of a thing. Also, other streaming services totally existed that the hardcore were already using, which was better value and worked on more devices. Hmm. Oh, and Spotify was founded this year and would launch in 2008. I mean, even the software was buggy and rushed. It was just a reskin of Windows Media Play 11 with features removed. When reviewers got their Zune before the launch, they said it was a nightmare to set up. A very Microsoft style of menu after menu after menu after menu, after menu and then more menus and then menus and menus and more menus and just more menus, yeah, the more menus. But overall, reviewers said it's fine. And I agree, it's fine. It's built really nice, while it's bigger, big deal, bigger screen. Some people didn't mind that it was blurry, just having it bigger was better. While it is just a dingus D-pad, it's very responsive, it's nice and clicky, although the circle shape is super annoying, actual. But the buttons are nice. These are also just nice. It needed to be the best thing ever. Microsoft were the only company with the means and influence to make something like a real revolution. Remember, they made Windows XP. This was peak XP days right here. So everyone was pretty eh, about it. So how did it sell? We took about a year and a half to sell 2 million of them, which was your big achievement. Well done, 2 million is a lot of anything. While Apple had sold 10 million in the last three months. Distant second. And really it paints a picture on how dire it was for all the competition basically. Because while this is heralded as just a huge flop, these guys aren't even brought up. Remember, 
iTunes was 80% share of digital music sales. So part of the more research that I did and people saying, oh, well, you know, it's got a bigger screen than an iPod, which makes it better. You know, it's got some Wi-Fi and that's all super neat. You know, that's why I'm still going to get one of these. Like Arcos, they've been around since the early jukebox days. They had the 504, huge screen, actual Wi-Fi. You could browse the internet on this thing. You could dock it up to your TV and ask it to record TV shows onto the hard drive for watching later. Yeah, it was a little bit bigger, but man, it, you got a lot. So people who wanted something really hardcore already had something way better than this. But by far the biggest reason that I hate it is that it is borderline useless in 2020. Microsoft have washed their hands of the Zune. Like I understand that it's old. Like this really is a Windows XP device. When like reviewers are getting a hold of it, it wouldn't work with their review copies of Vista. I tried Windows 10 anyway. I even tried the Zune install CD. I got reasonably far, but then it didn't work. And clicking on Microsoft's links basically sent you to dead nothings. I had to use forums. Whereas I got a download, had to sit through their wear hip and cool install of actually kind of terrible looking photos where I found that clicking and dragging music failed. Like it just wouldn't work. I got MP3s on there, but I wanted high quality stuff. Then I remembered how limited this thing is. So I busted out a CD drive and checked out an album that a friend got for me while I was in Japan and thought, stuff it. Perfect example to really sit down and listen to this album. And I get in there and there's no grace note. Like it doesn't know what any of the track names are. There's no album artwork. Look at this massive ancient Apple laptop. Yeah, the PowerBook. They weren't calling them MacBooks yet. This thing can still go on the Wi-Fi, can still go on YouTube, and iTunes on this thing will still talk to Grace Note and update track info and all that sort of stuff. The Zune isn't even that old and not, none of that stuff there. I had to do it myself. I tried to get Shrek on here. Couldn't do it. It just wouldn't go on. Nothing. It just wouldn't do it. I even converted it all that business it just wouldn't work you know i've got it on dvd and i just couldn't get it to work i even went to james for help and i bought off him this beautiful windows xp oh yeah epc bought an external drive the whole Megillah, everything to get the proper experience out of my dingus zune and i couldn't even install the software wouldn't even work the final straw that was it so basically this one album that i got on here that's all i could care to put on the thing you know after learning that it's just a rehash of this and just so rushed to market for a christmas deadline so sure windows 10 not working is one thing but xp the native software i know there are folks out there that can get their zunes working perfectly there's meant to be backdrops that you could put in here like wallpapers and want to make it look really alive but I've tried enough and there are better devices that I'd rather be playing with and it really disappoints me because even though Apple got rid of iTunes you can still sync the first ever iPods to a modern Mac. Apple sells the dongles. I know the D word gets a bad rap since you know Apple taking away the headphone jack but Apple's been making dongles for a long time. Every time Apple takes something away they make sure that you have a means to use it. You can turn Firewire into USB-C. It'll charge and sync this even without iTunes. When Apple took iTunes away, they built iPod into macOS itself. They really support the iPod. Microsoft has wiped everything and their excuse is, oh, well, it's old, you know, you need a new device. They could have built it in the Windows 10 and I actually kind of thought there would be something. They put their name all over it. They didn't say it was a Toshiba, they said it was a Microsoft Zune. And I was hoping that they would have turned it into just a click and drag thing. Sure, all the social and all that kind of business ain't there anymore, but just so you can at least use Use it. Cool guys do cool stuff when you're not expecting cool stuff to happen. And Microsoft just dropped it as soon as no one was looking. Super cool guys. To me it shows that they never cared. And when you look at this disgusting, disgusting. overhyped marketing for a rush product. I mean it's like a triple A game isn't it? Yeah just rush it out. You know yeah no we'll just market it harder. Welcome to the desolate wasteland. But there was something that they kept their word on. And it's something that's been sitting here I think since the very first video. Oh, it's covered in one grit dust. <laughs> The Zune 80, the follow-up, the one that they said they were gonna make all themselves and be its own bespoke thing. And as I said, Zunes are so rare in Australia. This is the only one that I could find ages ago and it was 10 bucks and I thought, why not? It doesn't work, I've tried. It is beautiful, this metal back, oh, a little antenna port there, I dig it. You know, oh, 
This thing is great. I have actually used one of these, by the way, which is the reason why this video took so long. I had to get my experience on this. You can flick it to navigate, and it's also a D-pad. Good friend of mine, Matt. Hey, Matt, I know you watch. Hey, he liked it because it was also just a D-pad. And sometimes it is more useful to be able to go boink, 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 and get to where you need. Had a radio. I don't care about a radio. Look, yes, it records and has FM radio. It's just never been a hot selling point, really. <laughs> it's thinner. Even though it's got 80 gigs in it, it is actually a real competitor to the iPod. This is totally a click wheel competitor. And looking at forums, this is the Zoom that people are actually raving about. This is the Zoom that people are saying, wow, it sounds fantastic. Wow, it's so nice to use. Oh wow, this is such a lovely thing. This was actually better than this. They done it. Well, I want so woo, mate, you did it, mate, woo. But the problem is, the Zune basically was the poo. <laughs> and this is just, hey look guys, the poo too is out. You can wirelessly send content. We're gonna call it sharting. Come and get it. Six weeks after Microsoft said, hey guys, come and get your poo. It's fresh and hot, mushy peas green. Apple announced the iPhone. <laughs> That's how you know how late to the party they were. Tech analysts went, oh my Jesus golly mate, the next iPod's gonna be just like this. And it was, it was called the Touch and it was a sales phenomenon. So basically Microsoft finally beat the iPod at a time that Apple made a whole new genre. The Zune just doinks the end of the media player wars and the smartphone wars began. Basically, modern living now. By 2008, GameStop didn't want to sell Zunes anymore. By 2009, Zune revenue was super down, 54%. And by 2011, Microsoft said, there's gonna be no more Zunes, boys. So sorry. But that's not even the most offensive bit to me. So Microsoft, even with all their experience, just absolutely duffed it so bad. They lost a billion dollars. <laughs> they lost a lot of money. But while we look at Apple as a titan today, when they came out with the original iPod with that freaking font on it, Apple were bankrupt in the 90s and they were bailed out by Microsoft of all things. True story. And when Apple announced the iPod, they were wet from the gutters and literally fighting out of the muck. At the time that Microsoft was bringing this out and that Apple was making crazy money with this guy, right? Microsoft was earning two times the money than Apple. They had the whole business subscription model going. They were rolling in money with their piles of experience. They literally said, oh yeah, well, we're just gonna rush it out and don't worry guys, we'll make it better later. <laughs> It is just triple-A game culture at the moment. Just release it haphazardly and buggy and just fix it later, am I right? Woo, we all love paying big whack for junk. Oh, fun little bug with these. In 2008, New Year's Eve, all the Zoom 30s stopped working. <laughs> they, there was a leap year that year and there was a bug in the software that just rendered them all useless. Huh, what's a time where you'd actually like to be listening to lots of music with your friends showing off something you may have gotten for Christmas? Well. Tough bickies, you can't use your Zune this New Year's Eve. And the fix was to wait till the next day and do a whole dance and whatever to get your Zune going again. Woo, fun. And to show you how much of the gigabit this was, it bricked these as well. So this isn't a really good representation of its capabilities. Putting wallpapers in here and showing off the video and talking about the audio quality, it was completely hampered by Microsoft's handling of their old devices. Have fun with 360s and Xbox Ones one day. So to sum this guy up, the biggest, richest tech company with by far the most experience in the field and influence in the computer scene abandons everyone they suck it into their junk media OS to wind up using someone else's design that wasn't even selling well, by the way, due to wanting to rush it out by Christmas, whose only hot selling features were totally gimped to put a store together that was poorly stocked with content at a time that no one was asking for something like this, only to add their own DRM an arrogant point system for buying music, stupid Microsoft fun bucks with less support of music formats and then to throw it all away like it all had never happened, abandoning anyone who actually thought Microsoft were gonna do something cool. <laughs> Squirting! But its OS style would live on to inspire such future big hits from Microsoft such as Windows Mobile and Windows 8. <laughs> 
a rich legacy of failure. I mean, it really has aged like a fine milk. And it makes me flinch to see this OS design because I was a Windows guy right up until Windows 8. Xboxes, you know, XP Vista, Windows 7. It was Windows 8 that pushed me away and I've been Mac and never went back. I mean, hey, once you open Chrome, you're home, right? If all you do is web browsing, it's open Chrome. You're home. Hoo-wee. Well, I've certainly enjoyed my time with the poo. And while we say no thanks to Microsoft, I say big thanks to you. Big thanks for watching. Amazing if you made it this far into the video. Shoot thanks to my patrons. One dollar a month. I've got extra vids. And mate, this time we're going to look at the Poo Nano. I mean, this will get its own full vid, don't worry, but I don't even know if this thing works. People saying that nearly none of these work and eBay's just riddled with broken ones. Uh, yes, I had to ship this from the States because, you know, Australia and, you know, the Zoom failed. You'll see this in a main vid, but if you want to see this right now, head into Patreon, the vid's already up there. So a big thanks everyone, and I'll uh, see you all next time. Quick, big group failure photo. Say it all together. Hang on. Uh, there you go. Three, two, one, we fail! <laughs>